All right. Where is my camera? There we go. Good morning. Things did not go exactly according to plan already. So if you saw my post from earlier, first off, the uh, National Tea Day Facebook page was having some troubles, but they're halfway through their day in England, so hopefully they've got it sorted out. But then I had technical difficulties and couldn't get the camera on the iPad to work with the live function, and so now I have a laptop on a tripod. It's very scary. It's held up with uh, shoelaces. Don't tell Janelle. <laughs> anyway, so um, we'll see if we can get the live feed going because like I mentioned, they are having troubles on their end. So we'll see what happens. And also now that I had technical difficulties here, my cameras are all different and strange and odd. And I look like a pale ghost, which I was not intending. Good morning, Lori, by the way. Why are you not on the road already? Because you want to make tea cake with me? That's nice. All right. So today we are making Yorkshire tea loaf from Betty's. Yeah, see, look, I'm all overexposed. I'm really sorry. It's the camera on this computer. I definitely should do all my live conferencing on the camera on the iPad once I get that look working because I looked much better on there. Yorkshire tea loaf from Betty's. So I sent out the recipe on our um, uh, website, polarlibrary.org slash recipe. There's information there. You can follow along. Or if you went and got one of the baking kits out of the little, little library, you can make it along with us. I have a bunch of ingredients pre-measured, and we're just kind of waiting to see. We'll see what happens. Oh, <sighs> good old Facebook there from the National Tea Peoples in England. And they are going to be live streaming a chef from Betty's Baking School, and that's the scenario that's hopefully happening. So the things that they told us to advance prep on was to line your loaf tin with greaseproof paper, which would be parchment paper. But uh, I'm going to be a rebel, and I'm doing floured and greased. And I'm also doing tiny ones because I'm baking it in a wood oven, which is behind me here. And it's really hard to get the temperature just right, so it's a lot easier to manage smaller things. So we'll, we'll see. I don't know how much dough this is going to make. I haven't made this. It's the scariest thing. Like ordinarily, if I was doing something like this, I would make the recipe ahead. But um, I'm just winging it today because I wanted to wing it along with these people, kind of as you and I experience it together. All right, so line your blah, blah, blah. Preheat the oven. Well, I got a wood fire going, so it's preheated. Chop your dried dates. Did that. They're in here. Pour boiling water. Oh, shoot. I did something wrong already because I was all anxious about my technical stuff. Okay, so I did something wrong, but that's okay. It's going to work anyway. You're supposed to put boiling water, 160 milliliters, onto your with a Yorkshire tea bag. Look, I happen to have some. Amazing. And then put the sultanas or raisins, golden raisins, in there. Whoops. <laughs> well, raisins are already in there. Do, do, do. That'd be lovely. See, the whole point of National Tea Day is to we're baking with tea. That'll be all right. I'm going to put it over here where it's warm. And maybe it'll steep better. Okay, we can only hope. All right, let's see what they're doing here. 8.56. Now, also, I had to do the math right, because it's 3 o'clock in England, so that would be 9 o'clock here, right? If this doesn't work, we have plan B, sort of. You and I are going to make a tea loaf together anyway, and we're going to talk about the 100 kinds of tea that Sarah has in her cupboard. <laughs> I honestly literally do have 100 kinds, but we won't go through all of them. But while we are waiting... So I think that was all my advanced prep. Mm -hmm. I want to mention a great book. I don't think you can get this version of it anymore. There's a new version, but it's, it's the layout's completely different, and I don't like it as much. But it's by a gal in England, Jane Pettigrew, who's amazing at all things tea. And she wrote this basically primer about tea. And tea is interesting because it's one plant. Everybody calls things that they drink, that they've infused tea, like mate and um, rooibos and everything herbal, but that's not tea. Tea is one plant. 
and white tea, green tea, black tea, oolong, pu'er, it's all made with the same plant. It's just how it's processed after it's picked that makes the, the differences. And so the thing I like about Jean's book is she goes through all of that, like what is white tea, green tea, and then how it is, like for example, oolong, it's semi-fermented tea manufactured in China, and then listen to the things that go on. It can't be picked too soon, and then when they are picked, they're put on sheets and wilted in direct sunlight, shaken in bamboo baskets to bruise the edges of the leaves, and then they're shaken and spread out for another amount of time, and then they're dried, and that's for oolong. It's a semi-fermented tea. So anyway, it's amazing the things that tea goes through. And then what I really like, which isn't in the new edition of this book, if you're ever looking for it, sadly, is this flow chart. Let me go that way. And it starts with the tea plant at the top, and then it goes through what steps does each kind of tea have to go through before it gets to your uh, grocery store or tea purveyor shelves. All right, now what time are we at? 8.58. Well, let's see here. Also, I don't even know if you're going to be able to see this screen. It was supposed to be the other screens around. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. It looks like their alcohol-free cocktails with an elegant fusion of tea went well. <laughs> well, we'll give it a minute. Or two. So I'm doing this live from my kitchen and we have a postage stamp of a house. And so I'm taking up like literally half of the house right now. So thank you to the family who is trying to be very quiet off in corners <laughs> or even out of the house. And so because we're doing this live in my tiny house, that means the my grandma's going to call, the phone's going to ring, uh, the clocks are going to chime, our neighbor's house will probably burn down and we'll have crazy sirens going on. No, I hope not, Twyla. And um, what else? Alarm clocks, etc. So anyway, oh, good morning, Teresa. All right. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, we're waiting for, as I mentioned earlier, we we're waiting to see if the National Tea Days live feed works because a couple of their events earlier in the day, it sounded like, because, you know, in England, it's already whatever o'clock, um, people couldn't access. But the last one looked like you could. So we're hoping that their live feed works out okay. And if not... We'll win. So anyway, that was called The Tea Companion by Jane Pettigrew, and it's a really great book. Like I said, there is a new edition. It's not horrible. It's just laid out very differently. There is a book out. Oh, look, I got a library reference um, by Lisa C. Very popular, very, very popular with book groups and um, just people in general. But uh, many, many people recommended this book to me because they know how much I like tea. And they mention a particular type of tea that this family is growing and trying to give to the world. Uh, not give, it's expensive, pu'er tea. And it's mentioned literally 99 times in this book. And our, sadly, our book club ladies were going to read this book this month, but I can't get them copies and they can't meet. And uh, I was going to serve them pu'er because it's a more unusual tea. That is a fermented tea. It often comes in little capsules and sometimes in cakes pressed like that. This is not an expensive grade. They're all different grades, like with all teas. All right, Facebook peoples. Yeah, let's go to their homepage. Oh, I am at their homepage. No, I'm not. I'm at their videos. Oh. See, I'm nervous, and so my fingers are shaky. Oh, good morning, Kelly. Oh, bummer. Fine, I'm going to start making this tea loaf without them because it sounds pretty good. I'll go through the ingredients. So we have our chopped dried, uh, chopped dried dates, sultanas, which are steeping over there with our Yorkshire tea, bicarbonate of soda, which is baking soda, butter, brown sugar, an egg, have that. And then uh, they're trying to do it as a gluten-free recipe, but it said you can use plain flour, so I am, and then ground almonds and baking powder. So I have all that out. I think this whole counter is crazy because I have everything out. All right, well, I don't see their little live thingy on here yet. 
That's frustrating. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, let me check one thing, and then we're just going to talk about tea if it's not. Check it on the laptop. <sighs> yeah, not showing up there either. Okay, we'll talk about tea for a little bit, and then let's just make some tea loaf together. So as I was mentioning earlier, tea is actually one plant that's just fermented and, and uh Different things are done to it after it's picked in order to end up with the different kinds of tea. So you start off with white tea, which is just the buds of the plant before the leaves open up. Very high grade of tea tends to be more expensive. You can see that there. This is an example. Very large pieces because they roll those buds really tightly and then they open up and are huge when you brew the cup. I should have brewed some. I did brew some green tea. So that's white tea. You have to steep, because it's so tender, you have to steep it at a lower temperature of water. And so I generally don't drink this because it takes more care to steep. And I'm usually kind of lazy about my tea steeping. Isn't that sad? All right. Green tea, same thing. It gets bitter if you do it with boiling water. This is gunpowder green tea. Hang on. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, this camera is awful. It's little rolled pieces. Each of those leaves is rolled. And then when that brews up, you can kind of get the idea of the green of the green tea. Now this has been steeping too long for green tea. It would be pretty bitter. Oh, oh, no, I, no lie. But I just put it in there to show you the color, and then look at these leaves. So this is that little tiny rolled up leaf. Now after it's been steeped in water, look how big those are. It's pretty gross, but anyway, it's, it's amazing to me. Those are, so that's a type of green tea. Mm -hmm. And then, what I drink most of is black tea because you use boiling water, it's the strongest, and you can just throw it in the, the cup or the pot and let it steep away. So I've, thank you Nancy Burns, I've gotten into this Arbor Teas from Ann Arbor, Michigan, and they do all organic tea and their packaging. This package is compostable in your backyard compost pile. So I really appreciate that. So I've really been on a kick for Nepal black tea. So look at the size of the pieces of this. It's huge. You have to put so much in your cup. Can you see that? No, not really. Huge, 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 huge. Wait, hang on, hang on. Huge pieces. So then when you brew it up, it's like half your cup is full of tea pieces. But it tastes so delightful. Tea is grown usually in India, China, places like that that you're probably familiar with. But it also grows in other parts of the world. Strange places you would never think of. In Charleston, South Carolina, if you can see that without the glare on it. They have a tea plantation in the low country because the conditions are fine enough there to grow tea. I went there for a celebration that they had. This is really chopped up, very fine. See, this is what most tea and uh, black tea that you find in regular grocery store sorts of situations is. It gets really chopped up, very fine, which is not the highest grade tea, but the fact that it was grown in the US just, I find it, uh, and it smells good. So tea can be grown in unusual places. I think somewhere on here I have a Hawaiian tea. Yeah, they grow tea in Hawaii. They grow coffee there too, so that kind of makes sense. And I would love to go see a tea plantation in Hawaii. Did I mention I did go to the one in Charleston? Yes, because I went to that event. All right, Facebooky people. <sighs> Maybe I did the math wrong. Maybe it's next hour. All right, forget them. We're moving on. I do wanna mention that the reason I'm doing this is because it's a Betty's Tea Room event. Betty's is in England and it is um, a great tea room. And I went there with the Nicolet College, Nancy, again, another reference for you, Nicolet College trip in 19, I don't even know what, and it was wonderful. I said, as soon as we got back, mom, we have to go for a family trip to England. It took us five years of saving and my grandma Krem's passing away 
and some of her money, but she would have approved. She was a big time traveler. And we ended up going as a family for five weeks to England. And I got to take my mom to Betty's. Hang on, I have pictures. Oh, I wrote a journal too. I can't believe my handwriting. It was so much better then. What happened? So we went, uh, Betty's, one of their main places is in York, and that's that's where I went. It was actually a day trip, a side trip that wasn't part of the, uh, the Nicolay trip at all. And I was walking down the street, and I saw these amazing pastries in the window, and I said, look at those pastries. I thought they were plastic. We have to go in there and see what they serve. They were real. They were real. They were amazing. So then five years later, to York, to Betty's, I got to take my mom to tea. And uh, Betty's, I write, world famous, owners of Taylors of Harrogate. This is the first place I'd ever had afternoon tea five years before when I felt like a total buffoon pouring loose tea bits, totally did that, into my cup and, the, and everything. I've been waiting to go back to Betty's for five years. So then I go through what we bought, what we drank, what we ate. Good times. So I was so glad to be able to take my mom. Oh, let's see. Also, I'm not a scrapbooker, so forgive me. Ah, uh, here we are. This was before we could do selfies because it was real live film. There's my mom down there. You can't really tell, but this is an exterior shot of Betty's. And then there I am, looking much younger, eating afternoon tea. And you see all those layers of things to eat? That's what you get at afternoon tea every single time. I mean, that doesn't look that nice because that's Betty's, you know. But anyway, that trip was in, Ma, what year was that? 2004? Yeah. 2004. All right, I'm legitimately giving up on these people now. That's too bad. Well, if I post parts of this later, <gasps> ooh, here we go. Hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Whoa. Great. You like to bake then, Lisa? I love to bake and I love creating things and I love trying to work with different ingredients. So working with tea is a is a, a real good flavor to work with. It's strong, it's gutsy, um, and a tea loaf is everybody's Oh yeah, yeah. At the moment. So uh, what better thing to sit home, have a brew, have Can you see that cake, at all? Tea, slice of cake, um, and sharing some little food tips with you as well, which is um, a challenge for people at home as well. I don't know if you could tell, but she's at Betty's. Absolutely, absolutely. I don't know I who this guy is. Take the stage. There's lots of yes, please do let her take the stage. I might just turn the sound down because it's annoying. But if she starts saying very interesting things, I'll turn it up so you can hopefully hear. But let's bake along. You know, go back and make it later. It probably takes uh, 15 minutes to prepare and then about 20, 25 minutes in the oven. Most important really? thing, obviously, today is making sure you make a good brew. Um, so I've got my Yorkshire tea bag uh, and I just boil my kettle and I just need to throw. Whoops. If you tuned in earlier, you saw I did that totally wrong already. I forgot to put my tea bag in before I put my raisins in there. So I'm kind of doing both. She's talking about getting the flavor of the tea in there, which it is National Tea Day, so that makes sense, right? And I am using, honest to goodness, York, Yorkshire tea. Oops, there we go. Oh no, she said, don't be a lazy tea maker. And I just said to the people who turned in er tuned in early, I was a lazy tea maker. Embarrassing. Don't let those fruits bump up. Um, fruit will steal moisture while it's dry and it will deliver moisture while it's nice um, and moist. So it's really important that we get that to happen. While that's doing, there's another couple of things to do, which is getting your oven preheated. So I recommend if you don't have one, get yourself an oven thermometer. So I'm doing mine in the wood oven, which, uh, yeah, I have a thermometer in there, but it's kind of like, 
whatever sort of wood you have going on in your fire is how hot your oven's going to be. There you go. You don't really have any choices unless you kind of leave the door cracked open. So if you tuned in earlier, you already saw. I'm going to do mine in little loaves. Do you see her loaf pan there yet? I don't know how big a, a pan she's doing, but I'm going to do it in little ones because it's just easier to deal with in a very uneven oven. Oh, there it is. Ah. Well, maybe I'll have like one and a half. I don't know. We'll see. And then she has the greaseproof paper, which I'm just flouring, and she's probably telling us right now not to flour <laughs> and grease the pan. Too bad. That's what I did. One more show and tell. I got this when I was at uh, Betty's last time in 2016. <gasps> oh, I didn't use that in my recipe, but I did brew myself a pot, so I'm going to have that later. Greaseproof paper. Yeah, got it. Also, this recipe is all in volume because it's British, which actually makes a lot more sense. So I've pre-measured pretty much everything, so I don't have to do it now because I'd be too nervous and would spill everything. Look at that. She's cutting her parchment all nice and fancy. Let's review. That's what I did. Oven and reaction time. We're using a bit of raising agent today. We've got baking powder. We've got bicarbonate of soda. Our baking powder is quite a stable um, uh, raising agent, and we call that one kind of the, the stabilizer. If we bake, it bakes and it locks into place. Um, but if we use bicarbonate of soda, I call it the weight lifter, and it's going to get soda. a wet batter up to quite a heavy kind of lift. And we need to get that in the oven. If we then. Oh hi, Roz. Hi, Becky. And Michaela. So this gal, she works in the cooking school for Betty's. They apparently give classes. Can you imagine being able to go to one of those? Ah, look, mine looks like that. Butter. Uh, presumably, she knows how to, to kind of teach people. So we'll see how it goes. And again, I haven't baked this bread, which is very unusual. Like if I was ordinarily doing something like this, I would have done it ahead of time. But I wanted to bake it with you kind of on the fly with this gal here. And I forget her name right now. Sorry. And uh, see how it goes. Um, so I'm not sure you She's very informative. Brown sugar, nice caramel. I, I have really dark brown sugar. It's going to make the loaf darker, which in hindsight, after I measured it out, I should have looked for some light brown. Her name is Lisa. I think that's what's on her jacket. If the recipe said medium egg, I don't know. I have large. That's all I got. Oh. Really, really well. All right. If you don't beat this properly, you get little kind of uh, whites and you get the yolk. And what happens is the white is not incorporated properly. That can curdle your cake batter. What? You know, white is kind of protein and water, and you've got butter, which is a fat. So you want the two things to be combined. Too much white, not missing. Okay, I gotta replace the fork with a whisk. Because you have to have a really, really good mix. Crack on and get that mixer. Mixer? I didn't want to use a mixer. I thought that'd be like way too much on the counter. We may just be rebels, okay? Maybe just a brick when I get my nun. Oh well. If my final tea loaf looks like my compressed tea brick, you'll know why. Oh, all right. Where do we move that next? Oh, okay. I don't generally use this mixer. I use the KitchenAid. I don't even know how to get the beaters in the thing. Whew. 
Is it hot in here? It's probably because I'm anxious. She's going to get ahead of me. Did she put the sugar in there? Oh, she see, she's got a swap out. Thought about doing a swap out and have a big flow. Who's this guy? Did you see? Did she put the sugar in there? Oh, great. Now this guy's commenting on not being a lazy tea maker. I'm feeling really bad. Egg. Come together, butter and sugar. I'm a lazy tea maker. Anybody else? I'm thinking the other guy must be from the national tea people, and then they're talking to this gal at the Betty's cooking school. Oh, look, if you, oh, you probably can't tell, but she has Yorkshire Gold Tea, a box of it, right up there on the, on the shelf. Some great tips from you there, Lisa. Thank you. Now she's you. adding the egg. Karen, <laughs> great tips. Thanks for sharing. For real, I know how to bake. This is a bit of a kind of talk, but what is really crucial is gradually adding the egg. So, so many people can curdle a batter mix, and that happens for a couple of reasons. Normally, one egg takes three additions. So if you've got 10 eggs, you've got a bit of time on your hands. You want to make sure that the, the batter mix or the sugar and the egg is really accepting each other. And if you curdle, something like this, it's not the end of the world. We are using gluten-free flour. If oh. you are, it doesn't have to be gluten-free. We're also using hazelnut. So if you curdle a batter mix. Okay, so mine looks all right, probably because my butter was so soft, so that helps. But um, because we're incorporating flour and almond flour, I'm not doing the strictly uh, gluten-free version that she's doing. We're doing regular flour. It should be okay, she says. So we have, I have regular flour and almond flour in there. So she's like, it's very, very crucial. It's very, very crucial, except if it curdles, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up if your mixture is looking like this right now, guys. Give us a thumbs up. Amazing. Is a little bit almost of a mocha shade. So if you're, you're kind of using it nicely, getting creamy. All right, now hers looks lighter because she has lighter brown sugar, right? Yeah. When your Mine's batter is having enough, your dark. mixture starts moving around. Actually, it is starting to curl. Like five or six eggs, there's a saturation point. All eggs are variable. And it gets to a point you're thinking, oh my god, I've got loads of eggs to get in. What do I do? Your batter looks Hurry up, get to the next step so we don't see my bad yeah. job. So at that point, give it another beat and then just kind of make a decision. You don't always need all the eggs. Just oh, you know what? Also, I had a large egg and not a medium egg, which the recipe called for medium. So, so. I'm gonna get my gluten free. So, I'm using some rice flour again. I'm just using this. So, she has rice flour, uh, yeah, the rice flour, baking powder, and almonds. In the rice flour, I'm gonna add some ground hazelnuts. If you don't have ground hazelnuts, ground almonds is fine. Or you could blend up some uh, brown hazelnuts or any. What did I say? Baking powder? You've got at home. 
and you want to make it uh, look free, just leave them out and just increase that flour by about 40 grams. I'm just going to mix it in really well and I'm going to add my baking powder. So, another really, really important One tea tip. Tea. When you're weighing out raising agents, um, really treat yourself instead of... Really, really, really do this well. Man, she's a stickler. She's a taskmaster. And what are you really getting in is a very and a variable amount in your baking. So for me, it's always a measuring spoon and it's always level. Always it's level measuring spoon. I strain mine because I don't know. But baking powder is always lumpy. What's going wrong? I can't find a brand that isn't consistently not lumpy. You can't find it. It varies from container to container. Do you find that to be true too? She's talking about having fresh baking powder, which is a good idea. It really does make a difference. If you ever watch Martha Stewart, man, she is on every single time talking about fresh baking powder. But she's right. All right, so now really mix that up. Agent. Little pockets of raising agent. Oh, I love a British accent. Pop it in. Elise, I've got a question for you. Yes. You tend to use uh, self raising flour, yes. so gluten, uh, you know, based oh. on. Would you need to add in the raising agent as well? That's a good question. Let's this guy's asking about self raising flour, which is a big thing in England. Add about one teaspoon of baking powder in. So it doesn't mean if you have, haven't got self raising flour, you can add it in. But I prefer having baking powder and self raising flour. In the southern powder, part of the United States, where they do a, a lot more biscuits, I mean, it's just a fact of life. If you go down the, the baking aisles there, you will see so much more self rising flour. And um, than you do up here, but you can find it. And as a matter of fact, I have a bag of it, but she's, the, somebody apparently asked the National Tea Day guy about using that instead of adding the baking powder separately, which you could do. It also has salt added to it too. And if you ever do any Mary Berry recipes from uh, British Baking, uh, Great British Bake Off, she does a ton of stuff with the self-rising flour. Okay, I'm sick of this guy, move on. Your baking agent because the baking agent has a shelf life and the flour doesn't, and sometimes the baking agent can drop all the way to the bottom, which means your first depends on how much you bake. Blah blah blah. blah. The very last loaves that you make are going to be way too big. So Lisa's tucked in some really, really good tips there, Lisa. Thank you. So I should show you guys. Oh, I added my. Uh, I've added my rice flour, my hazelnuts, and my baking powder. It's a bit of a chalky mix. You don't have to overwork it. Just bring it together. And then what I'm going to do now is move over to the cooker and show you what I'm going to do with the dates. So I'm just going to move over. Wait, what did she do with the raisins? What kind of dates are you using, Lisa? Because you get different types. What kind of dates? I'm using the ones that were in my freezer. I've got some chopped dates. You don't need to have the best quality. These are something you can kind of get in uh, like an organic food shop. Um, uh, you can have fresh dates and chocolate, you don't need to be the best quality for this, but the dates have a really important part to this um, cake. Okay, does it look alright? It's kind of gooey and chewy, so this method yeah. is slightly sticky toffee pudding. We're going to break down uh, the oh, sticky dates toffee and pudding. Some bicarbonate of soda. We're going to add it to our cake. Yes, after. that is true. See, you do, if you're like, oh, I don't like dates, I don't want to do dates in this yeah. recipe. You kind of have to because I did notice that they're going to do something with uh, the bicarbonate of soda with the dates so that it has a reaction because um, there's enough acid in dates that it reacts really well with baking soda. And that's what you do with many sticky toffee pudding recipes too. She's doing something on the cooker. What is she doing? I thought we had to drain our raisins. Oh geez. Uh, where'd my pan go? Oh, there we go. Oh, hey, she had the tea bag in there with the raisins. I don't feel so bad. Okay, good. Strain your... Did she put the dates in? Oh. Okay, I'm going to strain those golden raisins. She's getting ahead of me. 
Yeah. 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 Y
sort of the other. The sugars are still a little fluid. It hasn't had time to set up. Uh, and the favourite tip I have is don't tip it till you can touch it. If you could pick up the tin and comfortably hold it in your hand, that's a good time to be tipping your cake. So I'm going to save that one for later, but I do have one that I did again earlier. So that was a good tip. Don't uh, tip it until you can touch it, to, when it's cool it's enough to touch. Pop it onto the cooling wire. I hope she slices into it. I just want to see what it looks like. I want to see if all the fruit's on the bottom. Hers is gorgeous. It's cooled down nicely. If you try and take your cake out too early, it's just going to fall apart in your hands and you'll be really disappointed, and particularly with a gluten free cake. It just mm -hmm. She's talking about the fact, especially with gluten free, because there's no gluten to hold it together, that if you try to slice it too early, it's just going to fall apart. That's my problem. My mother makes amazing yeast bread, and all the cooking shows are like, don't cut into it until it's cool so that you don't lose the moisture, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. It comes out of the oven. I've got to eat that stuff with a big slab of butter. So good. So good, but I can't eat that store-bought bread anymore because my mom makes such good bread. Yes, we do. Indeed, we couldn't resist having a competition. So, guys, first of all, how amazing was that? Lisa, you are brilliant. Are we done with him? With you. Lisa so, from so Betty's. Um, I think we're going to call that done with him and her. At least I'm going to turn the volume down. How's that? Okay, so there you go. That was making tea bread with um, tea loaf with actual tea in it for National Tea Day, which is actually National Tea Day in England. So we're just celebrating it because. And then, oh, I think for all of our hard work, we should have a cuppa. So I have brewed up some of the house blend from Betty's Tea, <coughs> tea Rooms. They have tea rooms in York, Harrogate, where else in England? Help me out, Nancy. Help me out, Callie. I don't remember, but I've gone to York and I've had the opportunity to go there three times to Betty's. Right now, their tea rooms are closed because we are having a worldwide pandemic. And I'm on their emailing list, which is how I found out about this event, which was fun. And thank you very much for joining me. Let's see. Anything else? I guess I'll probably post pictures of my bread, whether it works or fails. Uh, later in the day. How's that for a plan? Also, I think um, later today I'm going to post maybe just probably what time is it? 930. Um, I'll post a second part of Janelle and Mai's interview that we did about a week and a half ago. Um, she's doing some hunting in the library and not for books. Hmm. That's a tease for you. So that'll probably post on Facebook uh, later today as well. And there you have it. If you ever get to England, if you ever get to York, if you ever have a chance to go to afternoon tea anywhere, please do think of me. And um, thank you very much. Enjoy your day. Sorry, you can't enjoy tea with me. Well, you can enjoy tea at home. Mmm, has a psalm in it, Callie. You would like it. <laughs>